And through several meetings and lots of drawings, and I know that Andrew has shown you, he did quite a number of design drawings, of which a lot of the ideas that he came up with were fabulous. But what was inevitable part of the process was the aspect of constructability and maintainability and design criteria. Once it was scrutinized by the engineers, questions came up about, well, how are we going to maintain the lights? What happens when the lights don't work? So gradually the thing will just degrade over time. So we had our own concerns and issues of, uh, in those three areas, but in, in, additionally so did MTA and Caltrans. And that's a huge challenge. That's a huge challenge for an artist. Even though it was very difficult, I think there was a lot of really great collaboration in coming up with what was the final design concept. We actually came out at the end with a great design and under the original estimate that we thought we were going to need to spend in order to build the bridge. And so what that showed me is that by having the artist early on in the process, you could actually affect the design and not substantially increase the budget. After a competitive procurement process, the Construction Authority selected Skanska USA and AECOM in June 2010 to finalize, design, and build the iconic freeway structure. Together, they will work with artist Andrew Lester to make his vision a constructible reality. Well, this is a multidisciplined uh, project. Um, although we're building a bridge, it involves a lot of engineering disciplines as well as architects that will uh, collaborate with the artist for the bridge. It's definitely a conversation that you have to hold your end of it up. There are lots of things like why you want to do this or why do you want to do that? Wouldn't it be better to do this? And then it will evolve a little bit more as we work through the actual details because you're taking something, you know, you're taking a basket element which is, was made of probably the Indians used reeds and we're making it a precast concrete, you know, so it'll be some design uh, progression as we work through those. Well, I've done enough works that I'm not uh, jealously guarding the, the first idea that comes into my head. That the works will evolve with uh, continuing input. Even uh, subcontractors who work in steel and concrete, I mean, they bring tremendous experience of the material. And uh, I always try to get advice from everybody. A big part of our job here is to keep him informed and keep him involved with our designers. Uh, and so that we make sure that we do not deviate the theme. The design build team has faced unique construction challenges, such as the logistics of building over a heavily used freeway, as well as an active fault. We try and avoid areas where uh, we have earthquake faults. Unfortunately, uh, this site, we span over uh, an active fault, the Raymond Hills Fault. Whenever you cross a fault, you're required to do a fault study. And as part of that fault study, we learned uh, various different characteristics of the fault, and we had to modify the design to accommodate those characteristics. The original design, the cross section was sort of a barrel shape, and we've had to flatten the, the bottom of the barrel a, a little bit to develop a cross section that can handle the loads of the fault. On top of that, we also have to hoist and set some uh, huge uh, rebar cages. Safety is always our highest priority in our business here. Uh, we are not only responsible to take care of our own workforce here, uh, most of all we uh, care a lot about the, the public. Placing concrete over the freeway is a high risk activity. This is why we have to shut down the freeway, of course creating some inconvenience to the public, but we've been working closely with Caltrans and the uh, city of Arcadia to come up with efficient traffic plan that will have less and most least impact to the local community. Also challenging for the construction team are the inclusion of unconventional aesthetic details in the design. The beam is almost 15 foot square, so it's an extremely prominent uh, visual element. And so the artist has shaped that. Because of these unique features and will require some skill, uh, craftsmanship from the formworks, which is like a casting form for the concrete to make this happen. We're looking to start on mid-2011, and we're shooting for completing the project mid-2012. 
The guys on the team really wanted this project because it was iconic and they kept coming to me and saying, Pat, this is an iconic bridge. We have to work on this job. We have to win this project. So we're really excited that we're, we're going to be part of something that will uh, was the gateway to the San Gabriel Valley. You know, it will be uh, that visual element that will hopefully appear on postcards and uh, uh, you know, people take photographs of. I want it to be a memorable event as one drives along 210 and as one takes the train. That it is something that people look forward to, that intrigues them, that has a kind of uh, mystery and life of its own. The average person doesn't expect to see art in their everyday environment and um, I think they deserve to. It's, it's one thing to imagine something that is, you know, 14 feet tall in a plaza area, but it's something completely wholly different to imagine something that's, you know, 300 feet long and uh, goes over four lanes of the freeway that has to carry a train on top of it. And I do believe that, that Andrew has developed something that is completely unique and unlike anything else that's in the freeway landscape in Southern California. And so he's met that challenge. View other videos about the Gold Line Foothill Extension and sign up for e-newsletter updates at www.foothillextension.org.